Question 1. The title Waves Carrying Information may be useful, the titles often are. The photograph shows a wave in a bay. The wave was made by a passing boat. And there's just a photograph there in case you're not clear what a float is. A. Which of, the, which of these best describes what is transferred by the water wave? Well here we need to remember that waves transfer energy but they do not transfer the particles or the material of the medium. In applications such as, for example, optical fibers, the light waves there are carrying information, but still what has been transferred is energy. So put a cross in the box next to your answer. Is it going to be energy only, water only? Well, clearly not water only. Both water and energy, no, it's not water. Neither water nor energy, again wrong, because waves do transfer energy. So the answer is A. Then B, the diagram shows the wave as it passes by two floats. The wavelength of the wave is 0 0.8 meters. Calculate the distance between the floats. Well, here you need to remember two things. What is one complete wave? And secondly, what is wavelength? Well, one complete wave on this diagram, for example, let me just make it a little bit larger here, would be from here to here, one wave. Two waves, three, four, five, six, seven complete waves. And the wavelength is the length of one complete wave or the distance from a peak to peak, crest to crest. So here we have, we just counted seven complete waves. Each one has a length of 0 0.8 meters. Seven times 0.8 is 5.6. So uh, the total distance in that diagram is 5.6 meters. Continuing with the question, the frequency of the wave is 0 0.4 hertz. How many complete waves pass each float in 20 seconds? Well, we need to recall the meaning of frequency. You should be able to recall that frequency is a number of waves passing a fixed point each second. So 0 0.4 means that 0.4 waves pass by every second. So we multiply by the number of seconds, 0.4 times 20. The answer is going to be 8 waves passing a fixed point, uh, for example, one of the floats each second. Part 3, B3. A man on the shore observes the wave, suggests one piece of information a man could gain about the boat by observing the wave that made it. I think possibly the amplitude of the wave, that is the maximum displacement, the maximum height of the wave, would give perhaps an indication of the speed of the boat. So the amplitude of the wave infers the speed of the boat. A faster boat, we will assume higher amplitude waves. The wave reaches shallow water in part C now. The wave reaches shallow water before it reaches the shore. Waves travel more slowly in shallow water. The diagram shows the wave as it reaches shallow water and we are to complete the diagram. Well, at this point it's good to use a uh, ruler uh, to draw things accurately. Here is the direction of the wave. Okay, It's bent towards the uh, normal and then we can mark in some of the new wave fronts. Let's just try and do that. Need to be careful that the wave fronts we are drawing are actually perpendicular 
to Now just to hurry things along, I'm going to draw these uh, freehand, it's quicker. Uh, but basically we should end up with wave fronts which are closer together. The decrease in speed means a decrease in wavelength and they are, must be perpendicular still to the new wave direction. Now it's not required in the question but just a little bit of background here. If you remember the speed of the wave is the frequency times the wavelength. It says that when or reminded that when the waves enter shallower water the speed decreases. The frequency doesn't change. The number of waves per second can't change otherwise waves will be disappearing or appearing from nowhere. So if the speed decreases, it means the wavelength decreases, and that's clearly what we've got in our diagram. The waves are closer together.